Welcome back, Brick Maniacs, to another episode of Brick Mania TV. Best Lando impression. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Today we have Dan Siskind talking about his AMX 13. Is that a tank? You would say that's a tank. I'd say it's a tank. It says tank on the box. It says tank. Yeah. It's 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 a light <laughs> tank. Uh, okay. So kind of a Cold War themed light tank or era light tank. Post World War II. Um, idea being a fast light tank. Um, has some pretty innovative features on it. So they're yeah. uh, way ahead of its time. Uh, you know. I, I could I could I could run down them real quick if you sure. If you so see. so is this uh, so you said it's Cold War era, right? Um, who designed it? Was it was it an Israeli design? No, this is actually a French tank. So what we have here, we've modeled the French tank. It's an AMX uh, thirteen mm -hmm. light tank designed in France. Basically, the idea being it's a super fast, super light tank, seventy five millimeter gun. This is a long barrel, seventy five millimeter gun. Uh, you know, basically using the same sort of gun that was on the Panther idea of real long barrel, high velocity shell. Some real unique things about this is it has one of the first tanks to use a feature, a full auto loader, like it has dual auto loaders. They're, they're revolver type auto loaders. Each loader has five shells in it. Yeah. So you end up with this kind of cool turret. It's called an oscillating turret, where the, the actual turret moves because these auto loaders are built in with the, along with the gun. Sure. And at the top of the turret and the gun all move as one uh, one one unit, I guess, would be the way to look at it. Um, so you basically have the gun, the, the turret elevates with the gun. Um, the only drawback about this design is that you have ten shells in the auto loader, in the in the, in the magazines. Once mm -hmm. those ten shells are gone, this thing has to hightail it back to safety, where they can the crew gets out of the tank, reloads the gun manually, reloads the auto loader. So sure. you've got ten shots. The, 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 the nice thing about this is it, it's super fast. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the faster light tanks. There's, there's not a whole lot of armor on these things, and um, that's the one thing that, the, the one drawback, but you know, for being such a light tank, um, you know, and such heavy firepower, you're really trading, making a, a nice trade off. You get those 10 shots off real fast, and then run like heck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Reload, and then uh, join the battle again, so. Um, we did do this, I did, I did design this uh, in Israeli, um, six-day war uh, color scheme. Sure. So we did some historically accurate sticker pack that comes with it. You see that there's an anti-aircraft or an aircraft re recognition stripe. So during the six-day war, they actually painted the stripe down the, the, the top of the, the, the vehicles so they wouldn't get destroyed by their own aircraft. Right. Um, some of the other unique things on here, the sticker pack has a, the chevrons. You have some of the, the unit, their pennants that were actually just stuck onto the side of the turrets. Okay. And then the stripes to help denote, to denote which which unit it is. Sure. Um, of course, you can actually cut the sticker if you wanted to do one, two, or three. That's, this is a common thing. Even, you know, even in modern Israeli tanks, they still use the same uh, uh, recognition. I don't, I'm not sure unit recognition stripes. And also the chevrons. It's a sticker. You can reverse it to any, you know, sometimes you see them up, sometimes you see them down. It all depends on which unit it is. So, so this is one sticker on the barrel you can It's one sticker, yeah. You just grab a scissors. If okay. you want to make a specific tank from a specific unit, there is an alternate number pennant. A lot of times you don't even see that. It's not on every every unit. You know, there's some of these based in the, in the west, but you know, the, the uh, Sinai Peninsula, some of them based in the Golden Heights, you know, depending on which battles they fought in, um, they'd have different, obviously different units, sure. and you can configure it. There's one printed tile. You do have this engine cover. It's a, the engine in this is in the front of the hull. It's off to the right side there. So we did print, the, that's a tile. Um, it's quite a nice, uh, quite an elaborate tile. And also the tanker himself. Lando did this. Uh, I'll be Lando and I'll talk about my figure. <laughs> it's green in color. <laughs> we printed binoculars on there, it looks like. He's got some World War II American <laughs> goggles on. So this, okay. this is, uh, you know, you see the M1 steel pot helmet, uh, which you'd see a lot of, the, you know, the time, the, the commanders would a lot of times drive around with the, their head hanging out the turret for better visibility. Sure. So instead of wearing a typical tanker helmet, uh, a lot of times you'll see them wearing a steel pot helmet. And of course, the Israelis painted them the same color as their tanks. So you have a different color. 
Uh, he's wearing American goggles. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's the first time we've actually done a, a tanker goggle as, as standard on a figure. Yeah. And then that's just the you know standard Israeli tanker uniform, IDF uniform. Um, that's all all with green torsos and legs. That's it, pretty rare for us to. Do right. Finals. <laughs> right. It is all <laughs> green. And yeah, it's a special special figure. And this would be the same. So like the Yom Kippur War, you know, basically this this uniform would be pretty much through the rest of the uh, rest of the war. A lot of times you'd see them in a in a tan color jumper, but they uh, they really started phasing in this green, which kind of st still to the modern day they still use. So and it looks like he's got tan gloves on. Yeah. Tan gloves, flesh head, all custom printed surfaces. Yep. It's one full 360 figure. Yeah, it is a nice figure. Yeah. So every you get pretty much everything in this thing. You have a unique tank, uh, real real innovative design. We didn't mention that there is a custom camera guy actually is responsible for this. You do have this custom printed muzzle brake. I'll stop moving it so you can <laughs> zoom in on it. Uh, it was just very unique to this 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 particular tank. Um, I don't know any other tank that has a sort of flattened muzzle brake. Yeah. There's something similar on the Super Sherman, but it's an even bigger, more exaggerated. Um, and of course, we have the brick arms, uh, this long barrel that was made for the um, it was the Easy Eight Sherman. But of course, it works yeah. great on here. So yeah. Not yeah. So this is the first time it's been seen in dark tan outside of being individually purchased. Right. So people are wondering why dark tan? Why was it? Because we had we had them up our sleeve <laughs> for this model. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you wanted to make yourself a, a Super Sherman or something, you're yeah. gonna, you're going to want that as well. So, so the Israeli Super Sherman, there are some versions that have that same turret, correct? Yeah, so this, this turret, I mean, it, it's the same size turret ring that's on the Sherman, which is also the M24 Chaffee. Mm -hmm. So there are examples of the AMX hull with a Chaffee turret, because before the, because sure. it took, France developed this in the 50s, mm -hmm. and they were using mostly American hardware. They didn't actually have a turret ready. The gun wasn't ready in time for the, the, the whole production started. So they started sticking Chaffee turrets on here. And you'll actually see Chaffees with these on it as they were testing it out. Right. So it's kind of then Shermans and, and Israeli Shermans. Um, you know, one thing about uh, you know, history, during the time, it was it, most of the world would not um, directly sell Israel weapons. So they were buying tank hulls of parts from all over the world, wherever they can get it. Uh, France was one of the only countries that would openly sell them weapons. So they were buying surplus Sherman hulls from Europe and then putting the AMX turrets on them. So it was a way that, you know, <laughs> I guess when you're surrounded by enemies and nobody will give you uh, weapons, you have to innovate. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. So, and they, and they used that uh, same hull design with a lot of different turrets and different munitions. I saw some rockets. Oh, there's tons, stuff. It's tons, tons. The AMX 13 hull is, is, is used for all kinds. And they built these, in fact, I think they're still using the hull for vehicles today. Wow. So the AMX 13, yeah. as, the, as is configured here, more or less was in production until like the, the mid 1980s, mm -hmm. and they still use this this uh, um, this chaff this chassis. You'll still see it on vehicles coming off the line. Uh, I don't know about currently, but I know they're still in service. There's also versions of this with a 90 millimeter gun, 105 millimeter gun. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a fire support version. So there are other versions. I mean, AMX 13 is one of the big guns, the, one of the biggest users was the Israelis. They found out that it really didn't suit their purposes. They upgraded, they, they tried to phase these out. I mean, after, shortly after the, the Six Day War, they sold off the, the remaining that they had and tried to upgrade to heavier armor because the one thing that this couldn't really take a lot of punishment, and they, they, they lost a lot of them sure. to uh, you know the heavier Soviet armor. So talking about these fighting uh, T-55s and yeah. IS-3s, <laughs> they, they, you know, while they could outmaneuver the, the, the enemy tanks, they just couldn't take a lot of punishment. Mm -hmm. So they're not good for defense or, um, you know, unless you're going to ambush and run. <laughs> so it's kind of like that's where you see the end of the light tank being implemented in the battle. Well, for the Israelis, more. they went to the whole, they, they, they subscribed to the main battle tank sure. uh, theme as well. They, they favored Centurions, and then the M48s, and mm -hmm. uh, M M60s, and, and of course built their own eventually. Sure. So. so in terms of the model, I, I really like, I want to point out how you did the, the fenders. Yeah, how, it's actually just... How they follow the angle of the track. Yeah, and it's a really simple design. It just actually just kind of floats in there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and gravity holds it in place. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and you it's, can, it's, it's not, subtle, it's not yeah. weak either. You can pick it up by it. Sure. So um, the thing we did notice as we came down here is that there's a couple of dark gray pieces <laughs> showing. On the actual kit, that those dark gray pieces are replaced with dark tan. We just forgot to replace them when we were... <laughs> on, the, on the prototype model. Right, this is the prototype. <laughs> the kits are all sealed up. They have it correct. You can see at the box that it's, it's, mm -hmm. it is the right colors. 
Um, so these are available at 100 for the first batch. They're not super, super high priced because it is a small vehicle. Dark tan isn't exactly the easiest color for us to get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's really impressive that you can make most the entire model in dark tan. Right, I think this is the I first time we've done a full kit in all dark tan. Yeah. Uh, we've done some models or some stuff in some of our instruction books, but mm -hmm. as far as I can remember, this is the first. I think, I think so, because usually it's one of those cheat colors you use if you're building a tan model, <laughs> you stick dark tan in there. Yeah, yeah. So, so. but that's it, so. Yeah. No, that's, that's very cool. Uh, so, so get them while you can. Our, this is our, our, our first Cold War light tank. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess the first since the Walker Bulldog. That was like seven years ago or something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, Stan. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today on Brick Mania TV. Yeah. Um, remember, you can follow us, like, comment, and subscribe. And ring, ring the, the bell. bell. Ring the bell. The if thing. you ring the bell, you will be <laughs> notified when we put out a new video, which mm -hmm. pretty much is going to be every Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah.